This little book I have in my hand is The Little Engine That Could. Um, everyone here knows this book. And you know the little mantra, the little jingle, the little saying that the, that the locomotive learns to say when he's going up the big hill. Remember what it is? I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And that sounds like the, the workings of a locomotive. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And so you get it in your head. And every one of us have either read this book to children or have it read to us when we were children. And I have this because Fran was looking for it for the original story and pictures. And so we got on eBay and found... <clears throat> one that we sent to Jen Stacy, one we sent to Tay and Trey, and one we have for our own house. So we bought three copies of it. Now, why do I bring this up? Because we all have a favorite childhood book. And whether it's this one, or was it Goodnight Moon, or uh, the one I remember me reading to my uh, younger brother was <clears throat> Go Dog Go, or Are You My Mother?, or um, Dr. Zeus books. We all have a favorite book. And it's my belief that the book we are studying, the book of Jonah, might have been Jesus' favorite book as a child. Favorite story as a child. It just has the character of what might be a nighttime, bedtime story, but it also corresponds in amazing ways with the life of Jesus himself. Let me give you a couple of examples. For example, both Jesus and Jonah were asleep in a boat with big violent winds that went around. When Jonah went down into the water, the sea grew calm. When Jesus spoke to the water, when he walked on the water, the sea grew calm. When the big fish, you heard it, vomited Jonah, there's got to be a more, a, a better word than that, but the, the Hebrew word, you're not going to like it any better, is hurled, when the uh, fish hurled Jonah on the, the dry ground, Jesus also, at the command of God, Jesus also commanded a fish to give forth a coin that he could pay the taxes with. And also, the Pharisees come to Jesus and they say, give us a sign. Give us a sign, you're, you're the one. And Jesus says, no sign will be given to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. There was an intersection between the obedient life of Jesus and the disobedient life of Jonah. And so we're going to pick up this story that I, I think has its remarkable place in the heart of Jesus. I can't prove it, but I just, I'm saying that to you. Jonah sails west. He's told to go east to Iraq, to a place called Nineveh, which is actually near Mosul, the ancient town or the modern town of Mosul, 600 miles from where he is, but instead he chooses to go to Tarshish, which most people, excuse me, most people realize is the far western side of Spain, outside the gates of Gibraltar, the Straits of Gibraltar. So rather than go 600 miles in God's direction, he's going 2,000 miles in his own. We said that last week, but we didn't get to two main characters, the sailors and the captain of the ship. Because I want you to see something about these sailors. They are better, get this, they are better at faith than Jonah is. And if you look around your life and you're a person of faith, you know people who are better at embodying the characteristics of what it means to be a Christian, a disciple, a believer, a follower of Christ than you are. Some people get it right. Even without believing, they are generous, they're loving, they have kindness, peace, pace, patience, gentleness, all those characteristics, all those fruits of the Spirit that you sometimes struggle with. Now look at these sailors. Just look at what they did. 
See how after God's own heart they are. They pray to the gods. They are in trouble. They, pray, they cry to their own gods. They cast lots to see how, if the storm can be, is, a, is the fault of somebody on board. They go to Jonah and said, what are you doing? And Jonah says, I'm, the, I'm a running from the God of Israel. And they say, you're what? Oh, my gosh. And, and Jonah says, throw me overboard. And these sailors say, no, 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 we're going to do everything we can. And they start to row. Even after Jonah has given up his life, they make a double effort to get out and through the storm. And just before they throw Jonah over, as a last resort, they pray, God, do not hold this, hold this against us. And when Jonah falls into the sea, it says they become believers. And they fall, and they fall to their knees, and they Worship the Lord. They make sacrifice. Some people are better believers than those who believe. You get the point I'm making? Some people are better at what you and I call the faith than what you and I live out as our faith. In a book titled Unchristian, cited the research from the Barna Group when people outside the faith look at the Christian faith. So this is interviewing people that drive by and about what they think you believers are. And it's amazing how close relationship these percentages are to what Jonah is. For example, most, Christ, most people outside the church believe that Christian, Christians are, one, anti-homosexual, 91%. Well, we don't know anything about that with Jonah. Or judgmental. Most believers are judgmental. Absolutely with Jonah. Absolutely true. Believers are hypocritical. Jonah, absolutely. He's a prophet, but he's running from God. They think Christians are old-fashioned, too political. We don't know anything about that. But out of touch with reality? Absolutely. Jonah's in the bottom of the ship, sleeping while everything is in peril. And insensitive to others, they think. And surely that's true of Jonah. We all know people who look at us and see in us poor representations of the faith. And we know people who do not have faith, who seem to be better representatives of the faith than we are. You work with some of them. They may be sitting next to you. You may be married to somebody that has all the 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 aspects and you think the characteristics of what a Christian is and yet hasn't embraced the faith. They're, they're the sailors. You could call them sailors. And my hope is, you sailors out there, that you will look at a Christian leader and you will look at a Christian congregation and you will see in us an authentic attempt to obey God's will. We're not going to get it perfect all the time. We won't make everything right all the time. We will make mistakes. But I want you to know, sailors, that we love God. We love Jesus. We believe that salvation is found in Him. We thank you for joining us online. The ministries of Christ Church Plano are made possible by generous contributions from our members and viewers. If you have found this sermon meaningful and would like to make a gift of support, please visit ChristChurchPlano.org give. Thank you.